the feds did this to Texas on purpose. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. All this pain and misery to try and prove that green energy, as they call it, is the wave of the future. Yeah, it is if you want a bunch of folks to die of exposure in their own homes. Take a look, this is Mary G. She was an 84-year-old great-grandmother. The Harris County Medical Examiner says she was one of 16 people who died of hypothermia in the county. Some of these deaths could have been prevented if only these people had known that there was a possibility they might lose power for days. This is a map that shows where the confirmed hypothermia victims were found throughout Harris County. One man was found near a park in Midtown. Another man was found inside his backyard shed. But most of the victims were found inside of their homes. KHOU 11 News. As you probably already know, I was one of the victims of the Arctic blast that pretty much devastated Texas for at least five days. Some folks are still reeling on the 25th of February, albeit they are no longer in any danger of freezing. But still, no water or power can be just as bad. You have medically assisted and dependent folks and others that depend upon utilities to be reliable, including phone and internet. So, as I read the federal government's Department of Energy's Order Number 202-21-1, it becomes clearer and clearer to me that the federal government, in order to keep up with their green energy ruse, refused to allow Texas to do what it had to do to be prepared for this weather event, which in turn left most Texans without the benefit of even the bare necessities of winter weather protection. Now, I'll try to read this order to you and comment when I can. I'm not a lawyer or a lawmaker, but I can read and comprehend things. Perhaps someone more well-versed in legalese can explain some of this stuff. You know, like Viva Fry. I like his vlogs about the law, but don't get me distracted. So let's go through this and see what you think. Department of Energy, Washington, D.C., 20585. Order number 202-21. Dash one, pursuant to the authority vested in the Secretary of Energy by Section 202C of the Federal Power Act, FPA, 16 U.S.C., 824AC, and Section 301B of the Department of Energy Organization Act, 42 U.S.C., 7151B, and for the reasons set forth below, I hereby determine that an emergency exists in Texas due to a shortage of electric energy a shortage of facilities for the generation of electric energy and other causes, and that issuance of this order will meet emergency and serve the public interest. On February 14th, 2021, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, the independent system operator, ISO, whose service territory includes 90% of the electric customers in the state of Texas, filed a request for emergency order under Section 202 of the Federal Power Act application with the United States Department of Energy Department to preserve the reliability of bulk electric power system. ERCOT is in the beginning of stages of an unprecedented cold weather event brought on by a rare southward excursion of the jet stream into the south central United States. Temperatures for Sunday and Monday in many parts of Texas are forecasted to drop well below the lowest temperatures experienced in several decades. And abnormally low temperatures are expected to persist for several more days. This weather event is expected to result in record winter electricity demand that will exceed even ERCOT's most extreme seasonal load forecasts. On February 21st, excuse me, I'm sorry, sometimes I can be dyslexic. On February 12th, 2021, 
Greg Abbott, the governor of the state of Texas, declared a state of disaster in all 254 Texas counties due to severe weather posing an imminent threat of widespread and severe property damage, injury, and loss of life due to prolonged freezing temperatures, heavy snow, and freezing rain statewide. On the morning of February 14th, ERCOT issued a system-wide conservation notice addressing the expected system emergency and describing steps that homeowners and businesses can take to reduce system demand. ERCOT has also worked with the state agencies to take measures that maximize generation availability in Texas. For example, on February 12th, the Railroad Commission of Texas issued an emergency order pursuant to Texas Utilities Code affecting the gas utility system in the state. The order specified increasing the priority of gas supplies to ERCOT generators. ERCOT's application also noted that the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has indicated that it will provide enforcement discretion to generators in the ERCOT region that may exceed state emission requirements during emergency conditions. So no matter what's happening, no matter how bad it is, you have to stay within a certain amount or else, basically, is what I'm reading there. According to ERCOT, the measures taken by ERCOT and other state agencies may not prove sufficient to avoid rotating outages as much as 4,000 milliwatts. Moreover, ERCOT requests that the Secretary issue an order immediately effective February 14, 2021 through February 19, 2021, authorizing the provision of additional energy from all generation units to emissions or other permit limits in the ERCOT region. The generation unit specified resources that this order pertains to are listed on the order 202 dash 21 dash 1 resources list as described below given the emergency nature of the expected load stress the responsibility of ERCOT to ensure maximum reliability on its system and the ability of ERCOT to identify and dispatch generation necessary to meet the additional load I have determined that additional dispatch of the specified resources is necessary to best meet the meet the emergency and serve the public interest for purposes of FPA section 202 C because the additional generation may result in a conflict with environmental standards and requirements, I am authorizing only the necessary additional generation with reporting requirements as described below. FPA Section 202C2 requires the Secretary of Energy to ensure that any 202C order that may result in a conflict with the requirement of any environmental law be limited to the hours necessary to meet the emergency and serve the public interest, and to the maximum maximum extent practicable, be consistent with any applicable environmental law, and minimize any adverse environmental impacts. ERCOT anticipates that this order may result in exceedance of emissions of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, mercury, and carbon monoxide emissions, as well as wastewater release limits. To minimize adverse environmental impacts, this order limits operation of dispatched units to the times and within the parameters determined by ERCOT for reliability purposes. In other words, I don't care what's going on. You may not exceed anything if it's going to mess with the environment. Like all of this wasn't messing with the environment to begin with. It doesn't snow in Texas. It's not supposed to snow in Texas. How many people in Texas do you know have heavy coats that don't live in the panhandle? If you're a Texan. Now it seems like we've got one person, one person making this decision. And I quote, based on my determination of an emergency set forth above, I hereby order from February 14th to February 19th, 2021, in the event that ERCOT determines that generation from the specified resources is necessary to meet the electricity demand that ERCOT anticipates in Texas during this event, I direct ERCOT to dispatch such unit or units and to order their operation only as needed to maintain the reliability of the power grid in the ERCOT region when the demand on the ERCOT system exceeds expected energy and reserve requirements. Specified resources are those natural gas, coal, or distillate fuel oil generating units set forth on Order 202-21-1. Resource list subject to updates directed here and as described in paragraph D, which the department shall post on www.energy.gov. 
ERCOT is directed to update Exhibit A to its application with the anticipated category of environmental impact, i.e. sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, mercury carbon monoxide emissions, wastewater release, other air pollutants by 2100 Central Time on February 15, 2021. B. To minimize adverse environmental effects, impacts, this order limits operation of dispatched units to the times and within the parameters determined by ERCOT for reliability purposes. Consistent with good utility practice, ERCOT shall exhaust all reasonably and practically available resources, including available imports, demand response, and identified behind the meter generation resources selected to minimize and increase in emissions to the extent that such resources provide support to maintain grid reliability prior to dispatching the specified resources. <sighs> Do these people ever read these things out loud as they're writing them? ERCOT shall provide a daily notification to the department reporting each generating unit that has been designated to use the allowance and operated in reliance on the allowances contained in this order. In furtherance of the foregoing and in each case subject to exhaustion of the available imports, demand response, and identified behind the meter generation resources selected to minimize and increase in emissions available to support grid reliability. One, with respect to any specified resource that is not, that is an ERCOT generation resource or settlement only generator, whose operator notifies ERCOT that the unit is unable or expected to be unable to produce at its max maximum output due to an emission or effluent limit on any federal environment per permit, ERCOT shall ensure that such specified resource is only allowed to exceed any such limit during a period for which ERCOT has declared an emergency, an, an energy emergency alert, EEA, level two or level three. This incremental amount of restricted capacity would be offered at a price no lower than $1,500 per megawatt hour. Once ERCOT declares such an EEA level two or level three event has ended, the unit is required to immediately return to operation within its permitted limits. So in other words, if you go over what they've already prescribed, even in the event of an, even in the event of an emergency, you've got to pay $1,500 per megawatt hour. Now I'm not sure exactly how, what that turns out to be or how much that ends up being. Um, uh, maybe someone else can help me out with that. Like I say, I'm not a lawmaker and I have no idea about this stuff. I have trouble paying my own electric bill right now. Two, with respect to any specified resource that is an ERCOT generation resource whose operator notifies ERCOT that the unit is offline or would need to go offline due to an emission or effluent limit in any federal environmental permit and to which ERCOT has issued a reliability unit commitment instruction, the operator may take all of the unit's capacity available to ERCOT for dispatching during a period for which ERCOT has declared an EEA level two or level three. This incremental amount of restricted capacity would be offered at a price no lower than $1,500 per megawatt hour. Once ERCOT declares that such an EEA level two or three event has ended, the unit is required to immediately return to operating at a level below the higher of its minimum operating level or the maximum output allowable under the permit limit. So no breaks for emergencies in this case. Uh, what exactly is our government doing for us? This, this is literally their job. In the event ERCOT identifies the need to exceed other relevant environmental permitting levels, ERCOT shall specifically identify such permitting levels and DOE will consider ERCOT's request in good faith. Yeah, sure it will, just like you see on here. Don't do it or else you're gonna pay a lot of money. And guess where that money gets funneled to? Into paying. Actually, I've read that there's a couple of things. I'm not sure how true this is. I can't verify it, but I have read a few things that have come across several of my feeds that uh, people are getting $10,000 and $15,000 electric bills now. And the 
lieutenant governor of Texas is telling people, well, you didn't read the small print. You should have known the consequences ahead of time. Too bad. But I still haven't figured out who these people actually are. So again, I haven't, you know, are these big companies? Are these residents? Um, again, I haven't done the research on it. I've just seen a few headlines, so I can't verify any of that stuff. Anyway, just what I heard. C. All entities must comply with environmental requirements to the maximum extent necessary to operate consistent with the emergency conditions. This order does not provide relief from an entity's obligations to purchase allowances for emissions that occur during the emergency condition or to use other geographic or temporal flexibilities available to generators. So do as we say or you get kicked out. D. In the event that ERCOT identifies additional generation units that it deems necessary to operate in excess of federal environmental permitting limits in order to maintain the reliability of the power grid in the ERCOT region, when the demand on the ERCOT system exceeds expected energy and, re and reverse requirements, including any such entities to which ERCOT intends to issue a reliability unit commitment, ERCOT shall provide prompt written notice to the Department of Energy at askoe at hq.doe.gov. Seriously? We have to ask permission to some nameless, faceless energy commission person. Does that sound right to you? Especially as Texans? Come on now. Uh, let's see. Identifying in an updated Exhibit A to its application such additional generation units, the fuel type of such unit, and the anticipated category of environmental impact. How the heck are they going to know that? At 9 o'clock Central Standard Time or 2100 Central Standard Time, whichever follows closest in the time to the unit identification by ERCOT to the greatest extent feasible. Such additional generation units shall be deemed a specified resource for the purpose of this order for the hours prior to the required written notice to the Department of ERCOT to the Department and ERCOT may dispatch such additional generation units provided that if Department of Energy notifies ERCOT that it does not approve of such generation unit being designated as a specified resource such generation units shall not constitute a specified resource upon notification from the department in other words, they're the ones that are going to determine it. You have to ask them first. I don't see anything like this turning out any better the next time it happens. The department shall post an updated order 202-21-1 resource list as soon as practicable following notification from ERCOT under this paragraph. E. ERCOT shall provide such additional information regarding the environmental impacts of this order and its compliance with the conditions of this order. In each case, as requested by the Department of Energy from time to time, by March 1st, 2021, ERCOT shall report all dates between February 14th, 2021 and February 19th, 2021, on which the specified resources were operated the hours of operation and exceedance of permitting limits, including sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, mercury, carbon monoxide, and other air pollutants, as well as exceedance of wastewater release limits. ERCOT shall submit a final report by March 31, 2021, with any revisions to the information reported on March 1st. In addition, ERCOT shall provide information to the department quantifying the net revenue associated with generation in excess of environmental limits accruing to non-RUC units in connection with orders issued by the department pursuant to section 202C of the Federal Power Act. F. This order shall be effective upon its issuance and shall expire at 11.59 p.m. Central Time start Friday, February 19th, 2021. With the exception of the reporting requirements in paragraph E, renewal of this order should not be needed, must be requested before the order expires. Issued in Washington, D.C. at 8.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this 14th day of February 2021. David, I'm probably going to get this wrong, Huizenga, Acting Secretary of Energy. So this one guy, David, gets to decide what we get to do in an emergency. 
and essentially says, well, I'm sorry that you're having so much troubles, but don't go over or else you're going to pay a lot of money. Now, isn't that what FEMA is actually supposed to be for? Isn't that what the government is actually supposed to do for us when things like this happen? Because, I mean, it's not an everyday occurrence. Ever, otherwise, everybody would be prepared for it. In fact, the North was making fun of us about it. But think about it. Have a, have a snow day like you have and take away all of your snow amenities. Don't be prepared for it. You know, it's like when you guys are not prepared for the summer months when they, it's really hot up there. You don't have air conditioning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your houses aren't built to keep you uh, cool. They're, keep, they're built to keep you warm because you live in the northern regions. That's just the way it goes. After seeing what all has happened and reading this edict, it only proves to me even more that these folks are that are supposed to be protecting our better interests merely want power over us. They spew all of these race theories to make us hate one another to help them do their jobs of fucking us all over. In my opinion, it's just like Tom McDonald said. I think Black Lives Matter was the stupidest name when the system's screwing everyone exactly the same. And especially when we need them the most. And yet some people see this and want to give them more power and authority over us under the guise of equality and equity. Well, you want equality? This storm and the folks that were supposed to protect us from this storm showed the most equality you could ever wish for. The storm and these folks didn't care who you are, what color you are, what you look like, what language you speak. This situation was equally imposed on all of us. And to add insult to injury, just a note, just a note, is actually kind of important if you're a Texan. Most of the board of ERCOT are not even Texas citizens. We've even got one on there from Germany. So it was also obvious that they don't want Texas to remain Texan anymore either. I hope this changes now that we know how they really feel about us. Oh, and I also noticed one more small little thing. They never once mentioned anything about the windmills. However, on a good note, and as much as possible, Texas citizens did all they could to help one another. Even if it was just to check up on, on folks. That, to me, is the true American way. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. As you can see, Bonkers insisted on being the star. <laughs> Gets in his little cradle position and sleeps for hours. So, but I do hope you like this video today. If you do, please make sure you give it a like, a subscribe. Sharing is actually the most important thing to, in order for me to get more subscriptions. As you do know that I would like to eventually make this into a call-in talk show where I can hear what you heard too. And of course the ultimate would be a donation. I still am sending out gifts, uh, unique gifts for that matter, for any donations that I get. And I would like to thank anyone that has supported me so far. Still trying to feed the kitty. We're up to 300 subscriptions again. Let's see if we can keep it that way. It seems like even the small guy gets targeted by YouTube about these kinds of things. So let's stick with each other about these things because they're important to us, our families and our future. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.